come back. For, for those who don't know me, my name's Legion. This is my new channel. Today, I invite a very special, a very special guest of mine, and her name is Marion Hertz, a photographer. Marion is a retired product management and development professional who now spends most of her time traveling the world, taking photographs. She has won international photographic competitions, including three best in the world nature prints awards in the Kodak International Salon. How impressive, right? Are you interested? Are you as excited as I am? Let's have a warm welcome to Marianne. Hi, Marian. Hi, Legion. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I was out this morning taking pictures. Great. You know, I still remember we met actually in person back in uh, December, December 23rd, 2018. I remember the day vivid, vividly. That was on the way back to uh, from San Francisco to uh, my home. And you are on your way home, right? Yes. You know, um, that was amazing. I met her because Marion traveled so much and I was on my Asian trip and I knew at that time she was a, uh, she is a photographer. So I asked her to give me a, a, a snapshot with my film. Can I share with the viewers? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Let's see, Legion, that's actually is your thing. Look at that, isn't that amazing? I want to actually share a picture of Marion. Hold on a second, let me share right here. Marion, look at that. Yeah, I, those, those set, thumbnail of yours, is that the dots of yours or you've been, been busy? I'm, I'm not seeing anything, Legion. You're not seeing anything? Okay, I did not share. Hold on. Uh, stop sharing. Let me share one more time. I'm sorry for that. Glitch. Whirl, whirl, whirl. We can always find the travel of Marion. Can you see it? No, it didn't open on my screen. Now you see it. No. Uh, it's it's on the uh, uh, on the screen right now. Tell the viewer uh, how many countries you have been visiting uh, since uh, your retirement. Can you talk about a little bit about that? Well, I've visited 110 countries total. I haven't counted the ones since I retired. And that total includes some that I visited when I was working. But um, most of them are since, since I retired in June of 2012. Well, with all the country you have visited, uh, is there any favorite one that you love to travel back again and again? And why? Well, my, my favorite, people always ask me, what's my favorite trip? And they're all really good, actually really excellent in their own way. But the place I liked the best was the subantarctic islands of New Zealand. So the, they're not the two main islands, although those are beautiful too. These are islands that are south of the main islands of New Zealand and actually considered the subantarctic. And I just love them because, you know, they're... They've been touched, but New Zealand's done a great job at cleaning them up. You know, they've gotten rid of all the man-introduced man uh, predators and vegetation, and now they're back to natural. And it's just wonderful. There are very few visitors who just to get out, are able to get out there and enjoy nature, see all the endemic birds and the interesting flora, and just a wonderful feeling to be there. Wonderful, wonderful. I understand, Marian, uh, I've been uh, visiting your, I'm a big fan of yours, by the way, since we met. I am in your emailing list. It's such a privilege. A lot of people probably know you, but the, 
there's a lot of people they don't know you yet. I'm so glad that you will be able to be here to share your experience in photography. Um, I understand you love the wildlife. Is there a particular reason? And you also take good picture of the people too, because you get the essence, the soul of the subject you try to capture. Um, can you tell us uh, a little bit about the wildlife? Why you specialize in that nature? Well, ever since I was very, very small, I've been an outdoor girl. I, you know, I was always out in the woods when I was growing up and I was a Girl Scout and still am a Girl Scout. And being out in nature, that's my church. That's, that's where I feel close to the power. And, and I just love going out there and being outside. And when I'm with a group, I usually try to separate from that group and just enjoy it myself and just commune with nature. And that's why I like taking a lot of nature photography. But I, I do enjoy the people. The thing is with nature photography, it's easier to do things with it because you don't have all the legal rules about model releases and that kind of thing. Yeah, I can understand that, the, the right of people. Some people, they just don't want to be exposed. I, I understand that. How, how old were you, were you when you first had your camera? I'm interested. I was probably six years old because I have pictures from my first grade class trip to the dairy farm. And I still have some of those pictures. So I know I had a camera at age six. So you were, you grew up in a na na natural uh, environment. How nice, that's wonderful. Well, we were in suburbia, but they took us to places and the first grade trip was always to the farm to see how the cows are milked. I understand, that's, that's so good that the, you, your first trip out to the nature and you do you still keep the camera <laughs> no i have no idea what happened to that camera it was one of the brownie cameras but when i was 10 my dad got me uh what was a kodak retinet 1a so it wasn't a an slr you couldn't change the lenses but you did have to set your f-stops and shutter speeds it wasn't an automatic camera because he said i don't want my kids to be photo dummies so you had to learn how to do all the adjustments, but you couldn't change your lenses. And it wasn't until 1986 that I got my first SLR. And the reason I went there was because I was on a backpacking trip and I saw this beautiful red Indian paintbrush against a gray granite rock. And in my head, I saw this beautiful fill the frame picture of this scarlet and gray. And when I got the pictures back, it was this little tiny red flower with this big gray expanse. And it wasn't quite what I imagined. And I just said, I have to get something that I can do what I'm seeing in my head. So that's when I went to an SLR. Wow. That was something. Um, you mentioned about flower. Isn't that uh, you get started from uh, taking flowers? Why yes. flower especially attracted to you? Any re reason for that? Well, primarily Arctic flowers. I, I mean, I like all flowers, but wildflowers, you have to look for them. They're not just sitting there in someone's garden. And, and I always enjoyed the hunt. And it's amazing if you stop and, and get down low and, and look in the grass or look in the weeds, you'll find flowers that you didn't even know were there. And so I started trying to take those pictures to show other people, you know, there's all this stuff there, beautiful things, and people just walk right by them. I mean, even in a regular park in a city, you know, there's these little ground asters that most people don't even see. They just walk right by them, and they're really beautiful little flowers. So that's what sort of got me into the flowers, was trying to capture things that most people don't see so I could show them what they're missing and maybe encourage them to get out and look for that kind of thing. Wonderful, really wonderful. Um... There's a, um, um, I, I personally love to take flowers still, even though I'm amateur, I just enjoy the moment of capture the essence of the beauty. So beauty is the eye of the beholder. There's an American uh, painter, I think she's a modern, modernist, Georgia O'Keeffe, you know her. Yes. So on her quote, she said, when you take a flower in your hand and, and really look at it, it's your world for the moment. 
I want to give that world to someone else, unquote. How do you resonate this uh, quote from uh, Georgia O'Keeffe? Well, that's pretty, in a different way, way of saying it, is pretty much what I was trying to do also, was to share that world with, with the general public. And it's funny you mentioned Georgia O'Keeffe because when I was doing summer art shows, a lot of people would come in, and I used to do abstracts. I still do some abstracts where you get very, very close to the flower and just try to get the edge of the petal in focus. And many people commented that my works look like Georgia O'Keeffe's, which is why I went and looked her up. Isn't and that yeah, something? So I'm not I just sure that she was, but isn't that something? I just thought about Georgia O'Keeffe when I'm thinking. I want to interview, have a conversation with Marion, and. Her, uh, her words just keep up popping to my head. Um, anyway, so Marion, I'd like to ask you, um, how, do you, how do you make a good photo stand out? Can you talk a little bit about that in your expertise? Uh, well, you really, you really need to, first of all, have a vision of what you're trying to do. Because if you don't know what you're trying to do, you're not going to do it. You know, just trying to grab a snapshot without thinking about it, it, you know, you won't get a very good picture. You'll get a, a snapshot. You won't get a photograph. So then you have to make sure, you have to look at the subject and decide how, how do you want that subject to appear in the frame and what's behind it. A lot of people forget to look at what's behind the subject. And... Um, you know, there's all sorts of rules about photography and the rule of thirds, which means, you know, your important things should, you draw two lines across and two lines down and where those corners are in the middle, that's where your important subject should be. And, you know, I try to do that a lot, but there, you can break the rules too. Um, with flowers, you know, I don't know if you want me to show, but I have one of the flower pictures, one of my favorite flower pictures of recent that I can bring up and talk about. Sure, Marianne, we would love to see that. And also um, mention a little bit about, maybe some people will be interested in how you compose a good uh, image. That's important because we don't want the image to be in the center of everything, right? It doesn't look attractive. Can you share maybe a few to let the viewer know about it? Sure, let me, let me get there. Take your time, we have time. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, we're gonna share screen. Am I sharing yet? Not yet. There we go, share screen. Okay, I'm gonna start with the flower. Okay. See if that comes up. Good. I think this is good like that. Yeah, okay, so this, this was in Bandanera in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I was just walking along with a group, and I saw this beautiful orange hibiscus, which I love hibiscus flowers. They're very challenging to take a photo of, because with flowers, you usually want to be fairly close or use your macro attachment or your macro setting on your camera. But what that does is it narrows how much of the picture from front to back is in focus. That's called the depth of field. And hibis mm -hmm. hibiscus is very difficult because it's a very three-dimensional flower. It's not right. like a daisy, which is flat. Yes. And so you have to, you, there's all the, there, well, there's three main things you have to set on your camera if you're not doing it in auto. And one of them is the depth of field. So I knew I had to get a depth of field. But what mm -hmm. I saw behind the flower was this orange wall. It was a painted concrete wall. It's like a contrast, right? Well, I just like that the flowers sort of blended right in with, you know, it stands out, but it's a nice background to complement the flower. A good hue, a good color. Yeah. For the, mm -hmm. And I, I could see that it was far enough behind the flower that that wouldn't be in focus, even if I made my depth of feel deeper. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to get this little thing, you know, the this uh -huh. as well as the petals. Yes. And then, of course, as you mentioned, we, you don't want to have this just being in the center. So I tried to have a stem leading up to the flower, which is in the corner of, remember, the rule of thirds. You have 
the lines there and there, and that's mm -hmm. right at one of the intersections. Beautiful. So a, good, so a good photo, you try to have something leading naturally into where you want the viewer to look. And you don't want a lot of distracting stuff. If, right. if, if this wall behind it had been even slightly in focus, the picture wouldn't be anything. Mm -hmm. I got, understand that. That's interesting. Thank you for sharing this uh, tip. Can you show us that your people photos? Sure, let me go to, whoops, that's an animal. Oh, I love that. Well, this mm. is one of my ones. This is um, Timor Leste. And um, we were, again, just walking through a town and this young woman with her child was in one of the stores. And she was willing, you know, I always, even if I don't speak the language, I'll hold up my camera and look at the person and, and nod and see if they agree that I can take their picture. Yes. And she did. And then what I liked was I liked, even though this isn't in focus, I liked having that little bit of lead in to her. Now she is more in the center, mm -hmm. but that was okay. Cause I also wanted to see, show that she was in a store. In the background, I can see so vivid, so colorful. I, I do love this picture a lot. I think that show on your website, right? At the slideshow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's in there. Um, but I learned something because I've taken some trips with National Geographic photographers. Yes. There was one guy, uh, Massimo. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who just kept pounding into me that you don't just want these portraits of people that all you see is their face because you have no idea what they're doing, what the setting is. You don't yes. have any other part of the story. Yes. And so, so at that this trip was after Massimo. And so I yes. was trying to leave a little clutter, even though there's a little clutter in the back, it's really not that distracting. I really love this part. Oh my goodness. Even they are, they are not slightly centered, but look at her face. She's proud of her baby, right? <laughs> yeah, and he even looked and smiled at the same time, which is sometimes hard. Yes, it's such a sweet, sweet image. I really love that. Can you show a little bit about your wild, wildlife, like a bird? Well, I don't, well, I'll show this wildlife. So this was in China. Wow, where, where, where is that in China? It was one of the national parks. It was not very close to Chengdu. I don't remember the name of the park. Mm -hmm. And we were actually on our way out of the park, <coughs> excuse me, and this troop of Tibetan macaques mm -hmm. came running down the road. And again, so you know, cute. of course you get out of the bus and everybody wants to keep shoot, shoot, shoot. But then I stopped and said, okay, I want to make a real photograph. And so I looked for some kind of behavior without a bunch of other animals in the way. And so this is more of a portrait because you don't get a sense of place, but you know, it's just a very touching moment with the baby nursing and mom yes. trying to inspect the baby's feet to make sure there's nothing, no. Yeah, I never saw something like that. That's so special. <laughs> you really captured the essence. That's so good about you. You capture the essence, the soul of your subject, which I really enjoy. Yeah, I always looking forward to your uh, new email updates and your wordings too. Let me see if I, I, I'm sure I have a bird in here. So let me uh, close this out and let's see if we can find, well, this is a fun one. It's actually, it's actually, whoops, there we go. Is that in India? No, this is actually in Alaska. A lot, which one? We, we go to the bird now. Yeah, I have uh, my screen. Okay, you know, yes. In the two birds. Two birds. What kind making. of bird is that? That's a Savannah Sparrow. Wow. I, I so know that special. it's got that little bit of yellow above the eye. Are <coughs> they having the worm in their, the, the beak? Well, the way this picture happened was we were waiting for bears. I was on a bear photography trip. And while we were waiting for the bear to show up, I, you know, I saw these sparrows. And I originally just focused on the female who's right here. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was taking pictures of her and then I got lucky. And the male just flew in and it had a caterpillar too, and they're mating. And, you know, I was, I was right there ready to take the shot. And, you know, sometimes luck happens. Yeah, you know, so, so cute. Do, do, you, do, you, do you feel like uh, in the animal kingdom is the uh, 
the the male one is always more beautiful. <laughs> oh no, there are some there are some species where the female is more beautiful. Yeah, I see. Yeah, because you have seen more than I do. Because I I saw a lot of time the uh, Mandarin ducks. The 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 male one has more color than the female. So I was just wonder. Yeah, well, for the most part, that's true because the male always have to show off their display <laughs> to attract the female. Yes, yes. That's and so it's, interesting. It's fun. I have a picture not on this little bit that I have here, but it was it was a pintail wida. It was in Africa. What is that? It's a, well, the male has a very long tail, and they do this dance in the air to try to attract the female. And I was lucky enough to get the the male and the female's just looking like is this the best you can do <laughs> <laughs> you know and it, it, you probably observed observe so so many animals in your life that you know what they are talking about <laughs> yeah well a lot of people on my trips they say oh you just you just start taking pictures you don't stop and look but i really do look because you can't take a good photograph unless you're looking and if you're, I like to sit and observe. So I don't like to be in a fast moving group. Like I go on birding trips, but I like to separate because the birders, once they see something, they're moving on. And I'd rather stay with the bird and just watch the behavior and try to capture something special rather than just a documentation shot. So this, this was fun because, you know, the male just came right in. I was already focused and it, it lasted like a second. Yeah. So, so beautiful shot. I really like that, the, the, the way the, the, the male on top and the female right there. That's, that's amazing. I it love it. It would be it. nice if this wasn't here, but there was nothing I could do about it. Well, that, 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 that's it. You just have to catch her at the moment. Do, do you do editing? I understand your picture is so vivid and I don't think you do any editing at all. Did you? I do some. I do very minimal. I'd rather... And I learned this when I worked for Kodak and mm -hmm. I was in the motion picture division. I got to meet Steven Spielberg, which mm. was really cool. Very and nice. he said, you know, you need to capture it right in the camera. People run around with all these videos and they think they're going to fix it in post-production. But if you don't capture the image right the first time, you're not going to be able to fix it in post-production. You know, there's all sorts of software that can help you fix mistakes, but you have to start with a good image. And so I do very minimal. I'll crop. Cropping is my friend. And because a lot of times you can't get close to the birds. Like I was using a 600 millimeter lens here. So I wasn't that close. And then I did crop. But, and maybe, well, I shoot in what's called raw. Most people shoot JPEG. That's what your, you know, automatic cameras will shoot in is JPEG. Some of them have a raw, a raw option. The advantage of RAW is you're capturing much more information. The mm -hmm. disadvantage is you do have to do some editing. Yeah, I agree. The colors will be muted. So I always add up one button of saturation at least. And I'm not changing the color, I'm just making it more vivid because the RAW image doesn't have that punch that you want. And every, everybody who shoots RAW will always add saturation. You have to do that. A crop, uh, if there was a bright sun, say, shining on here, and that's really hard to expose because if you have dark and you have light and it's a bright sun, that's really hard, and the cameras have a hard time with that. Our eyes can figure it out and get all the detail, but the camera lens isn't quite as good as our eyes. And so sometimes there, there's a tool you can use to just try to bring the detail out in the highlights. Or if I underexpose and don't have the detail here, I could bring that out. But I, my, the way I like to operate is spending 20 seconds or less on a picture. You know, I've seen people spending three hours on a picture. I try to capture the picture and spend maybe 20 seconds on it because I just don't like the computer time as much as I like taking the pictures. And that's the one thing I don't like about digital is you do have to spend a lot of time at the computer if you want to have really good images. I, I really agree with you. For me, I also do a lot of cropping, but, but I don't do uh, too much editing. I just capture it. I'm, I'm like a snapshot person, but I, I do a little bit cropping because at the moment when I capture it, I probably cannot do the exact uh, ratio that I want to, but I want to just capture it at the moment and then crop 
whenever I want to. Thank you so much, uh, Marianne. I, 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 I learned some, some, something from you today, but I would like to um, get people to know about your website. Can I share about yeah. that? Maybe you want to, uh, okay, let me share your website here. Can you see it? Yep, I can see so it. So if anybody love Marion's artwork, her fine art, you can go to marionhurst.tenfolio.com. Maybe um, the audience can subscribe. I don't know how, if you have a subscribe button or if yeah, they can I email you. There. Yeah, you, they can email to you and become your fan too, right? Like me. Yeah, yeah, you, can, you can always email me through the site. Um, everything in the site is arranged in galleries by trip. So if you, can you go back to that? You want to go back to the screen? Yeah. Okay, so people can see it. Yeah, so if you look right under my name, it says my photographs, and when you click on that, that will get you to a screen of thumbnails. All right my photos. Here. Yeah. Let me do that. And Look there's that. a slideshow too, I, I think. You have about 122 gallery. And especially while we are in quarantine now, people cannot travel. They can go, go to the, the world through your lenses, <laughs> under Marion yeah. lens. So all you have to do is double click on one of those icons, on right. one of those thumbnails, and they're in the most order of most recent first. Mm -hmm. I like to think the photographs are better in the most recent because I have improved over time. Yes. See all the way down here? There's so many pictures. If you like wild na nature, if you like people, if you like to travel, this is the great opportunity for everybody to uh, enjoy the world through Marion's lens, Marion's fine art. Let me stop sharing here. I think... Um, there's a lot of things I have to sing your praise, but uh, instead of talking about all your accomplishment, I will put that down in the uh, show note, which is the description below, and uh, your uh, website information will be all there. Um, I want to close up with um, something, uh, a question to ask you. Since I'm an amateur, and uh, there's an emerging, or we would say inspiring photographer since you are so established, you have been to jury show, competition, what would you, uh, what would you encourage them with um, your perspective? Go ahead, Marian. Um, I would say the first thing is take pictures that you wanna take. Don't try to imitate someone else. Just take a picture when you see something and you feel that's a moment I wanna capture, take it. And you have to really be, say, I like this picture and I don't care what anybody else thinks about it. I like it. If you start shooting for someone else, you're not going to be very successful. You have to, you have to feel the picture, in my opinion. Um, making money at photography is very, very hard these days because there's so much free stuff up on the web. Um, the ones who do make some money, you know, they've taken an image, someone's seen it, you know, and is published in a bunch of different books and then they become famous and then have of course, you know, then everybody knows them. But I know very many struggling photographers who lead trips actually just to try to make money, at least enough money so they can travel too. And I've thought about doing that, but I'm, I'm at the point I don't want to do that kind of organization anymore. That was in my younger days, I would do that kind of stuff. So, but, you know, just be true to yourself and think about what you're taking. Don't just bring the camera up and start snapping. Think about what you're seeing, what angle you want to take it from. And it's hard when you're with a tour group, I know, because you know, I'm either always running to catch up or running to try to get ahead of them to get there before there's a bunch of tourists in the picture. And be patient. You have to be patient. You, know, you have to wait for that shot. You, like, I'll take a whole bunch of shots. I took a bunch of shots of that Savannah Sparrow but the one I wanted to put in the gallery was the one of the mating, because to me that was a special one. So you're gonna, you, you know, with digital, you can take a lot of pictures and throw them all out. You know, I, I throw out about 80, 75 to 80% of the pictures I take, I throw away. But not really, you never wanna get rid, rid of everything. So, and this is a piece of advice, and this was from the Nat Geo guys. 
when you when you start downloading your pictures or whatever you're going to do with them always have one drive or one card that has everything you shot even the crap keep it all so i always have one drive that has every single thing i shot even the stuff i know is terrible it's blurry and then i have the other drive i always save at least two places you always want to have duplicates of your pictures because think about it if you lose your card and that's the only place you have the picture, well then you've lost them all. So when I'm on a trip, I always download to two exter external hard drives every night. Yes, I won't go to bed until I've downloaded the day's photos to two different places. And then they're not in my camera anymore, so I can't go showing all my friends, but that's okay. But you do want to keep everything because you never know. And I have gone back to some of those crappy ones and the other, the other piece of advice is don't delete pictures in your camera because there's, your camera isn't the greatest screen. Put them on your computer and then decide whether it's a good or a bad picture. And then delete, delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's a lot of wisdom in your photography and also your practice. I really appreciate you coming here today to share all your expertise Marianne, maybe we'll invite you next time again. If okay. people put a good comments, what do you think? Sounds good. Thank you so much. So uh, before we wrap up, I would like to say to everybody, dare to dream, the time is now. If you like Marianne and, and Legion, please do subscribe. Maybe you will see her again in this uh, channel, okay? Until then, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Marianne, again. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.